Hi, and welcome to this next edition of The Buzz, a show that we broadcast here out of Abington's cable TV studio at Abington High School. My name is Sean Riley, and the intent of this show, the purpose of this show, as you may know, for those frequent viewers, is to kind of bring to light uh, everything, that, the good things that go on here at Abington High School, especially in the athletic field. And this show is going to be dedicated to our outstanding track and field program. Indoor track is what we're going to focus on today. And I have, on this first segment, two of the very best that have uh, walked the halls of Abington High School and run around some of the local nearby tracks. Uh, joining me today is Jill Groom and Selena Wood, who are the two seniors, uh, two of the seniors that are on our track team. Welcome aboard, ladies. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. Love to have you. Um, anyone who follows Abington Sports, Abington Track, is already familiar with your names. Uh, two of the more successful track athletes on the girl side of, of the agenda. Um, I wanted to ask you how you guys got started in track. I mean, a lot of kids, you know, pick up youth soccer, pick up soccer because they played youth soccer, or they pick up football because they played youth football. How does someone become a track athlete? I feel like for track, it's such a different, like, environment because a lot of the people who have been doing it for four years, like seniors, have honestly been doing it because either they did, like, the club track in middle school, yep. or they know it because of their siblings. I think that's true for like both of us. Yeah, um, I did it because my older sister started and she loved it. She actually started a, as a distance runner, so that's how I got into it, but then she ended up being a sprinter. And you are a sprinter or a distance runner? Distance runner. And you are? Sprinter. A sprinter. Yeah. So two different parts of the game. What drew you to being a sprinter or be a distance runner? Is it just something that just kind of felt good or? You just kind of wanted to set that goal. I think I'm just, I just like know that I would not be able to be a distance runner. <laughs> yeah. And like, I think like one thing I've kind of always had going for me in like other sports was that I had speed. Mm -hmm. So I think I knew it was something I'd be good at. And I just kind of kept going with that. And have you always been someone who can just run and keep running? Yeah, um, I actually, now that I think about it, I think I have always loved distance because of the Coombs race. Yeah. Um, I've been running it literally forever with my mom and my dad and my family. So, like, I started out with 5Ks, and I was like, I love this, and I just wanted to keep going. I'm very jealous, because I don't know if you can tell, but I'm not a track guy, <laughs> never have been. So there's a lot I want um, the viewers at home to kind of pick up and learn about the whole track program. I mentioned in the beginning, you guys, you run outdoor track, track, you know, track and field, cross country, but you also do indoor track. Mm -hmm. And that season actually just concluded. But for people in New England, I think it's always a kind of a double take when they hear about indoor track at a school like Abington that doesn't have a indoor track. Yeah. So how do you guys, how does your team practice and compete? So for like distance and sprints in indoor track are usually are not at the same place. Yeah. Like it really just depends on like what they have planned for you for the day. Like for sprints, it's always dependent on weather. And like if yeah. it's warm enough to go outside, we will be outside at the track. Um, if it's not, we'll usually go to the Frolio where we'll go into the gym and we'll do something we call plyos, which is like we'll do box jumps or like speed ladder and like stuff like that. Um, and then we'll go to the weight room sometimes. We used to run in the hallways, mm -hmm. but that proved itself to be dangerous. <laughs> and so we're not really supposed to do that anymore. But yeah. And how does a, a distance athlete prepare or practice uh, in, in, for indoor track? Um, a lot of the times we'll go out on long runs, like we'll run to either lows. Like we have um, a lot of specific runs that we do that we just have kind of like names for and they'll be just like, all right, let's go to lows, like let's go to Bank of America. So we'll go out and do that. And then um, a lot this season, because it was very cold, um, we do what the sprinters do and we do plyos or we do weight room or um, stuff inside so that we don't pull something. So then where are your competitions? You do all this work for practice and now it's time that you're going to go square off against usually more than one other school, right? Yeah. yeah. Where Tell us about where you guys typically have your competitions or your yeah. track meets. So we run at the Reggie Lewis Center in Roxbury? Roxbury, yeah. Mm. It's like, it's depending on traffic, it could be like a half hour to an hour drive and we do that every Monday, which <laughs> is definitely a hike. Um, but the, what's like interesting about it is that every team is always there. Like you're always running technically against the same people, but points wise, like you're always usually running against one or two teams. And like for us, we never know who we're running against. Like we don't know if we've won. Like we don't. Really? Yeah. Cause I think a lot of people see indoor track as more of like a preseason for outdoor. 
Yep. Like we're not super focused on the competition of it besides like the bigger meets like state relays, states and all states and stuff. So how are the bus rides? Is that the, the fun part? I mean, going in there has got to be kind of agonizing. But coming out, you're relaxing. Um, going in, we, we oftentimes bring like a speaker with music. Um, we haven't done that every time this season. So some bus rides are just like quiet because a lot of people like track is a very mental sport. So a lot of people will like be in their heads, especially yeah. like the sprinters or the milers who run like the 55 or mile, which is like right at the beginning. So we're like, sometimes we're just thinking about like immediately getting off the bus and like booking it to the bathroom because <laughs> the lines at the red are always so long. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> there's a lot of anxiety involved. <laughs> That's true. So. You, you, we read and hear these updates from you guys and, and other members of your team who are setting their personal best, you know, during the different meets you go through. And I'm curious, when you guys come into a meet, are, do you have, I, you know your competition. Yeah. You know who that other kid is from Carver or East Bridgewater or whatever who challenges you. When you're running in those type of situations, are you looking to beat that person or are you really just focusing on your personal best? Or is it a little bit of both? I feel like for me, it's definitely a little bit of both. Like I think for, I run the 55, which is like my, my first event. And that's like the first event of like the meet. Yeah. And so like I get there, I warm up and I go run. Um, and a lot of people like, we're all feeling the same way. Like we're all nervous and like talking yeah. to each other and like jittery. And so it's not like a, like a malicious kind of thing, like wanting to beat this person, but like, I see this girl from Hull and I know that she's faster than me and I know that she can like be faster than me today. And I just like, sometimes it's fun to think like, oh my God, what if I beat her? But right. it's usually about like PRing and like getting. Sometimes they're, they're gonna push you to yeah. try to do your best. As if, if you were running alone, you might not really push yourself as hard as if you had that girl from Hull yeah. chasing you, hopefully chasing you. <laughs> How about you, Selena? Um, I think it's like what Jill said, it depends on the day kind of. Um, Especially with like longer races, like the mile, the thousand, the two mile, like the, your time can vary so much that like someone could have like a, an off day and like their whole race can be thrown off by like even a lap. Yeah. And that could like either add seconds to your time or if you usually use them to pace, like it could throw off your time. So a lot of it depends on like that day and like how that race goes. So you mentioned that uh, you run the, the 55 meter, mm -hmm. usually your first, um, just so uh, sports fans at home, know how good these two girls are just had some notes from your coaches that jill is a short sprint specialist the second fastest 55 meter uh sprinter in the south shore league with a time of 7.84 seconds that, that for those non-metric people at home 55 meters is about 60 yards mm -hmm. so you're doing a 60 yard sprint in under eight seconds you're the lead leg of the 4 by 200 relay as well as a 300 meter runner and you're also a member of the Outdoors 4x100 Relay record holding team. Mm -hmm. Pretty impressive. Uh, there's also a note here that you have two sisters, Kaylee and Shannon. Yeah. And the note from the coach says that you are the youngest and fastest member of the highly accomplished groom trio <laughs> of sisters. Is this true? That's kind of more of like a, like not much of an inside joke, but it's just like kind of funny because like both of my sisters do college track. Yeah. And so my sister Kaylee, she was a sprinter. She runs like the 400 usually because indoor um, races, I guess, are completely different in college and like um, high school level. Like they have the 300 at high school, but they have the 400 outdoor, I mean, in college. So she's really fast, but we all run different races. So, so let me also brag about Selena here. From, from the coaches, one of the premier distance athletes in the South Shore League, the school record holder in the indoor mile with a time of five minutes, 40.26 40 seconds, won the mile at the league meet and placed fourth in the thousand meter on a very difficult double, which we can talk about what a double is in a second. Um, you guys just kind of wear the crowns there for Green Wave track. Um, and you, we, we were talking earlier and you just kind of uh, alluded to it. it. It's different when you're running at Riley Field versus when you're running indoors. Explain why to the viewers at home, as far as the track size and how it's laid out. Um, so the track size outside is double what it is inside. So the Reggie is a 200 meter banked track. So it kind of like, there's like an incline and a um, Kind of like you'd see a NASCAR. Yeah, um, on both of the curves and then outdoors, it's a 400 flat track. And it's a lot, it's so much better in the spring because you can breathe. <laughs> when you're outdoors. <laughs> and the Reggie air is like, 
there's also like a difference in the amount of teams like so the whole South Shore League will be there almost every race during um, Reggie meets and then outdoors it'll usually just be two or three teams. What do you, you prefer the outdoor running? Yeah. As, as a distance runner I gotta assume yeah. that makes <laughs> complete sense. Yeah. Um, so essentially when you're indoors two laps equals one lap at an outside track. Yeah. So completely different mindset I guess when you're always kind of turning when you're inside. Yeah. Um, Outside, um, we got a lot of great stuff going on at Riley Field. It's kind of tucked away. A lot of people don't see it. And one of the reasons we want to have you guys on today is it's hard to put on cable TV, a track, put a track meet on cable TV, especially the cross country, the long distance runners. We can't have yeah. cameramen following you. First of all, they'd never be able to keep up with you. Um, but even um, when we have the track meets, and we've had some of the, I forget what we call them, the, the regional events up at Riley Field. We had like 40 track teams up there. Yeah. That I've been there a couple times for those. That's a fun thing to watch. And you must, I, we talked about the people that you, uh, you want to beat on other teams, but you also must meet a lot of friends from other teams. Is there a lot of camaraderie be, you know, between schools and teams? Yeah, I think so. I think for me, um, especially, it's like if you know someone from another team, it's usually like from another sport also. Yeah. Like a lot of the people I know from other teams also play soccer in the fall, which I play. So it's kind of like a like a different kind of like, oh, you do track. So like, yeah. it's like a different mindset, I think. And a lot of, I think a lot of kids do get into track because they want to stay in shape for some other sport and then kind of get the bug <laughs> and want to stay with track. Yeah. Um, and I always find it is possible, and you guys have proved it, that some of the coaching that you get does make you faster. It gives you more stamina. It makes you a better athlete, right? And let's talk about who are the coaches, the coach of your team. Um, so we have Mike Casely, Will Casely, and um, Coach Bennett. Coach Bennett. Yeah, Coach Bennett is um, distance. And then in cross country in spring, we also have Coach Campbell. Yeah. And you have a, a, a lot of young uh, teammates on your field. Yeah. Tell me about some of the girls that are around with you that you seem to be most impressed with that might not even be the fastest, but the ones that are really just putting a lot of effort into it and really you can see them developing their skills. Um, so one of our best teammates and most accomplished is actually um, Evangeline McClary. She's a freshman. Yeah. Um, she has a ridiculous mile time, ridiculous two mile time. She made states in the two miles. She medaled twice at leagues. Um, She's been MVP two times in a row for cross country. Um, she'll probably continue that streak. Like that's never been done before. And like to say that as an eighth grader is like insane. She's super yeah. nice. She's always so positive and everybody loves her. I've heard a lot about her myself. Yeah, yeah. Even like you said, last year as an eighth grader yeah. <laughs> running at the high school level and beating everybody, yeah. you know, yeah. and that's impressive. I mean, that's just natural skill. Right. Who else on your team um, deserves maybe a shout out if there is anyone um, that you're just impressed with how they, you know, contribute to the team? Um, I want to give a shout out to one of our throwers, Malia Goldberg, because um, I feel like throws and like jumps are kind of events that don't get talked about as much. Yeah. But they win us the most points easily. Yeah. Like in past years, like if we win a meet, it's because of the throwers. And I think like being one of the only like female throwers on the team and like winning us those points and like kind of doing it like more off the radar than like the runners is like impressive. So when you talk about throws, you're talking about um, shot put, yeah. discus, javelin when you're outside, mm -hmm. discus and javelin outside. Shot put can go indoor or outdoor. Um, do those kids who join the team for those events also have to run or not? So they can be a kind of the, you have the track and field athletes. You have field athletes and track athletes, or some kids cross over and do both. Um, you don't have to run and you don't have to do field. You can do both if you want to, but like a lot, most of our throwers only throw. Like that's yeah. their main event. Um, we have a lot of people who are both track and field athletes. Usually those people are doing like jumping events yeah. rather than like throwing events. Um, but yeah, you can do pretty much whatever you want. And I think that's a big misconception is like, oh, I don't want to do track. I don't want to run. Right. Like you don't have to run. Right. There's a lot of different events you can kind of try to you know, focus on. Yeah. Um, speaking of as a student athlete here, you guys, let's see, Selena, you are a member of National Honor Society, student council, drama, yearbook club, great role model for the very young distance and cross country squads, according to your coaches and, and 
an incredibly passionate athlete, always willing to double up in events or fill in for a relay. And again, middle sister of the decorated wood trio of track athletes yeah. you mentioned. Uh, we talked about Maria and Sophia, who's on the team now. Yeah. Um, and you are also very involved, Jill. You are, uh, they talked about how you're a very thoughtful leader, always giving feedback to your coaches and uh, positive energy all the time. And uh, they write that you've actually been a de facto coach on many, many occasions uh, over your four years. You're very involved in the school committee, your uh, school community, class treasurer, member of the uh, student government and active minds clubs, right? Um, how important is it for you to have sports and these other club activities as part of your education here at Abner High School? I think it's really important to have like a space where we can go that's like with our other classmates and still related to school but not like completely part of school. Yeah. Like it's kind of something that like we create and we can run and like yeah we have like teachers with us but they're kind of there to just like be our support systems and that. You have a favorite teacher or a favorite uh, subject, Selena? Here. I do. It's um, a class I'm taking this year. It's AP Earl with Miss Madalena. How about you? How about Jill? Um, I think my favorite class would be AP Lit with um, Miss McHugh. AP. All right. Good job, ladies. <laughs> um, and you're both seniors. Yes. Do you have any idea what's going on in your world next year? Not really. I've been kind of just waiting on like it's feedback early. from schools. So yeah. I think I have like probably half of them have like I've heard back from, but. Great. You, Selena, still up in the air, too? Or you... I know I want to run wherever I go. I know I'm going to do cross country and track, um, and I'm leaning towards you, Muscle, right now. Great. Yeah. Excellent. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Before we go, uh, I want to hear about this podcast <laughs> that, uh, that you put together. Jill, <laughs> tell us about it. Um, so I basically just do a podcast with some of my friends. I've done it with my um, friends Jack Regan, Becca Sala, and Natalie Van Leeling. Um, we kind of just talk about whatever on it really i just we've talked about like we did a new york trip last year with um the music department we talk about concerts we've been to stuff we've done um in a recent podcast i did with natalie van luling we kind of just talked about like how we met how we became friends like stuff like that so yeah i, I know natalie she's very easy to become friends yeah with her. she <laughs> she can talk and we're going to talk with jack regan in the second half of this so I'll, I'll ask him for commentary about that how do people get to watch this podcast um, you can go to the Abington Cam website and find all of the different places that the podcast is posted on. My, what I find it on is Spotify, just because that's what I use. Great. Selena, Jill, I want to thank you guys for being over here. These are two of the best from Abington High School. And so now when you kind of hear about what they're doing on Twitter or uh, different social media things, now you got the faces to match to the girls. I know your parents are very proud of you. The school is very proud of you. And just want to thank you for all your efforts as seniors and wish you the best of luck in the remainder of your senior year. You guys uh, have a lot to be proud of. So thanks for joining us. We're going to take a quick break and be back with two of the male members of our track team to see if they can outdo these two female members of our track team. It's a, it's a high bar to set. But we'll be back with more of The Buzz in just a few seconds. Hi, I'm Chris Manola. And I'm Michael Leary. And we're interns here at Abington Community Access and Media. Though you don't have to be an intern to get involved. You can always volunteer. Here at Abington Cam, we have a state-of-the-art production studio where you can create all the types of podcasts, shows, PSAs, interviews, you name it. It's all up to you. So, what can you do to get involved? To start off, you can monitor audio levels with our intriguing state-of-the-art audio board. But perhaps you'd rather be behind the camera shooting all the action. Maybe you'd opt in to be in front of the camera and maybe be the star of your own show. Maybe you'd rather direct the production via the switcher. Ready one, take one. If you want to learn more, come on down to the studio. We always have room for more. If you're interested, please don't hesitate to reach out and come by and see what you can do here at Abington Camp. All right, we are back for our second segment here of The Buzz, and today we're talking all about track, especially indoor track. And now we uh, kind of empty the seats and brought in two new stars of the Abingdon Greenway track program. Uh, from our boys program, we have um, Jack Regan and Damon Montero. Welcome aboard, gentlemen. Thank Thanks you for having us. Uh, we talked a lot about track with the girls in the previous segment, and I wanted to kind of get your perspective of the things you like about the track program and why you are in the track program. I mean, everyone in the high school, uh, at Abingdon High School, and like any other high school, you kind of like 
trying new things, trying new clubs, trying new sports, figuring out what you enjoy. And what brought you guys into the world of track? Yeah, um, so I'm a distance runner. So I run cross country um, and track and field. So it started in COVID and I just like didn't have much to do. And so I, was, I would start running and that's kind of how it started. I had done some stuff before that, like the track club. Um, but then I was just, I was like, I'll just give it a shot. I'll try it out my freshman year because things were weird. Um, and I tried it out and so I just kind of stuck with it because cross country to track is the natural progression. Yep. Um, and I've kind of stuck with it ever since. Great. And Damien, how about you? Uh, so it, it originally started with uh, uh, one of my soccer coaches like roping me into it and it was like, hey, you'd be good. And I, was, I said, okay, I'll do it. And I kind of just like did it. Because you are a junior. Yes. And this is your first year running track for yeah, the Green this Wave. Yeah, this is my first ever year of running track like in general. How was it? Like it's got to be, was it intimidating, kind of nerve wracking or it was, was it something that you really fell into quickly? It was It was kind of nerve wracking at the beginning, but then like like once I started going to the practices and like getting everything done, I it kind of just like fell into place for me and everything kind of like went great. So you, you mentioned you play soccer. Yeah. Do you feel that running track helps your soccer game? I mean, is, are they complementary? It, it definitely does, but like they're, they have two like very like big differences. Like, cause like you're running after a ball and you're constantly trying to go at it. And, but sometimes you have breaks in track. You don't, you just have to keep running until you finish. And then, yeah. So there's definitely like, differences between them, but I definitely do think that they, they do complement each other a lot. So Jack, you're a distance runner. Damien, what, which way? I, I'm a sprinter and jumper. Sprinter and jumper. Yeah. Okay, good mix there. So again, I'm going to assume I know the answer to this question, but we talked with the girls earlier about indoor track versus outdoor track. Any preferences amongst you two? So I do, I, outdoor track I prefer. Um, it's more competitive, but I and it's more serious because points mean more. But indoor track, you have every single team there every single week. So there's much more competition, especially in a distance race, yeah. where it's like it's very heavy based on your competition. It allows you to push yourself more, and the same people are there every week. So you know who you're competing against. So I do like that aspect of it. Um, and also, it's just a different feeling. I just like, mm. I, they're almost equal to me, especially running on the track. Um, even though in the mile, it's eight laps as opposed to four. Like each lap, you see your coach one more time, yeah. and so your coach is yelling at you each time you run around the fans. They're screaming at you again, like your um, like all your teammates. So it's just different. Outdoor track is something like, especially in the two mile, it's like you're on that back stretch, and it's like you're by yourself, and so it's like you only have to run eight laps, but it's like they're a little more lonely as opposed to being indoor. It just so it almost like feels cool. like two different sports. Exactly. Yeah. Really, right? How about you, Damien? Is it indoor, outdoor? So from just like general experience of like from practices, I do like running outside more than indoor because the fresh air and all yeah. that. And it just like feels better to me because I'm like used to playing sports just like genuinely like outside. So it's just like an environment I'm used to. And I, I it's definitely like much different, but like indoor, it definitely has like that, that um kind of gets you like riled up when you, when like you have people like you're passing and like you're doing the laps and you have people like yelling your name, like you must be this. louder. Indoors yeah, it's, too, it's right? much louder. It's much louder. Yeah. Yeah. So t tell me, when you're running a long distance um, event, you're usually running against how many other athletes? It can really vary, especially like in a race like the mile, bi like those bigger, bigger like distance towns like Norwell, um, Middleborough, they'll throw a ton of kids in those races. Um, but then for some, like, some reason, the two mile, the two mile doesn't have a lot of kids in it ever. Um, there's been races where there's been like one two miler in the race and you're just watching them go around. Mm -hmm. Not so much in indoor. Um, but it just it it really varies just because like an 800 meter race they limit it because yeah. there's like only so many well indoor in the thousand race they limit it because there's only so much space to run, yeah. um, but in the mile they'll throw like 18 kids in the track and they'll split that into like two heats. But in the two mile just they're not gonna run two two miles because it takes too much time. Yeah. So it's whoever signs up. So if you're running against seven other kids at the same time, what what how is it that you guys? don't collide with each other, don't trip each other. I mean, how, do you just kind of learn it, or are there actually like rules to the game, rules on the road when you're running a track? It happens, I mean, it happens a lot. They actually just recently made a change in the 300 meter event where they used to have what's, what was like the merge, and so you'd run, you'd start over here and you'd run like 150 meters or whatever it is, um, and then there would be like a bunch of cones. And in your would, lane. And everyone right. would break into lane one, yep. which that would like make or break their race. They changed that, so now everyone stays in their lane but yeah a lot of the times especially within a race like the 600 like the mile um it messes up your first lap which can have an effect on you you have more time to make it up in a race like the mile but like your start it positions you where you're going to be mm -hmm. you really you have some more time to make it up but the start is 
make or break for a lot of races. It's it, maybe it's a bad kind of simile, but it's kind of like a horse race. So you yeah. see on TV, yeah. you all come out of the gate separated, but at some point, people trip pinch. over each other all the time. Yeah. It's just like it happens. Like fortunately, our social league isn't super aggressive, but I've been in meets where people are super aggressive and like not very. Um, do not show great sportsmanship. It really just depends who you're with. And so I'm curious, if someone was unsportsmanlike and really knocked you over, they can be disqualified. Yeah, as long as if a ref sees it or an official sees it, that can happen. But like especially in a like a like an outdoor race, if you're on the back stretch, yeah, a ref might not see that. Right, so. just a yeah. little nuanced yeah. elbow yeah. can can do the job. Especially in cross country, a lot of elbowing. So Damien, you mentioned you throw. Yeah. What uh, you, oh no, jump. Oh, uh, jump. I'm sorry. What type of jump do you do? Uh, well, so indoors, I did. I'm doing mainly focused on long jump, mm -hmm. but um, I'm going to do high jump in the in outdoors, and most likely long jump and triple jump and all. Just all really the jumping things. So, again, your first year doing track. Uh, the notes from the coaches. Uh, I asked them to give me a little background about you guys. Best long jump on the team at 17 feet, 8 inches, despite only practicing a handful of times. Mm -hmm. That's impressive. It just kind of comes natural to you? Or just You just took it and went with it? Yeah, yeah. it kind of, it kind of just comes natural to me because like, I have like a lot of my strength and like my legs, so I definitely think I can get up there and like get far as well. And you mentioned you're a sprinter. You do the 55 meter also. Yeah. 7.05 seconds mm -hmm. on the 55 meter. Um, and then on the 4 by 200 relay, you had a 24.2 split time for your for your laps, mm. depending on where you are. What is that? Two, 200. So outdoors at Riley Field, one lap is 400 meters. Mm -hmm. And this is what I'm learning today. Indoor track, one lap is 200 meters. Yeah. Wow. And then, um, Jack, you had a PR, a personal record this year with a mile time of 5 minutes and 12 seconds and a two mile time of 12 minutes and 17 seconds. Both marks are the second best in Abington High School indoor track history, which is unreal. Congratulations to both of you for your Thank successes. You. You. Um, tell me about the other guys that you're running with. What, what's the team like? Is it a, a, a lot of younger guys, a mix of seniors and juniors, or who, who do you got on the team? Yeah, I mean, we're super lucky. We have a super young team, um, and so we have a lot of drive, a lot of goofballs on the team, mm -hmm. but they're great. Um, spe specifically, I want to shout out our 4x4 team. They qualified for state at the state meet yesterday. Um, they didn't actually end up running, but that was um, Nathan Calcano, Aiden Calcano, Lucas, um, and um, Lucas De Silva, right? And, um, Delaware. and yeah, um, Sam and Sam Medeiros. They're awesome. They're all super fast. They've been training all season. They've been working super hard. I'm super excited to see what they do in the spring. Um, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with in the spring. Great. And you've been very involved in other things other than sports at Abington High School. Tell us about some of the things that you do to kind of be a well-rounded guy. Yeah. Um, so one of my favorite things I do is um, I am part of the um, nonprofit organization Project 351, their service organization. Um, we do a lot of good work in and around the town, which is what I love about it. Um, but then I'm also involved in clubs like Drama Club. I'm a stage manager there. Um, um, active minds like like Jill Groom recently. Yep. So yeah, I'm pretty happy. That I'm pretty involved. It's good to have that kind of do a bunch of different things yeah. to kind of keep your mind fresh, but also not get too stressed about one thing. And Damien, um, you mentioned you play soccer also, obviously. Yep. Tremendous soccer program. You guys have been really lighting it up lately. Yeah. Um, how's it looking for the next season? So for like the next season, I definitely think there, there'll be some changes, but we'll definitely be able to do either like. Same same thing that we did this season with making to the playoffs and getting decently far into it, but um, I think we're definitely either going to do the same or if not better this, uh, next year because we have a lot of young guys. We have uh, the biggest amount of uh, people in our soccer program this year. Really, I think it was like forty five, maybe fifty almost, and that's like big numbers. And we don't we don't really know how, like what to do with like that many people. Yeah. So then we're just gonna we're, we're gonna be moving the guys up to the varsity and. Hoping to do really good. What position do you play? I play center back. Center back. All yeah. right. I mean, you guys are really, it's amazing how the Abaddon soccer program has now kind of risen into the limelight. You know, there was several years where it was kind of just something that some kids did during the season and no one went to the games. Now it's fun. The sidelines are loud, you know, and you get yeah. some great competition against the Rocklands and Cohassets and all. So it's great. And I'm glad that hopefully the track program makes you a better soccer athlete also. Um, Tell me again, I like to ask the question, uh, in Abner High School, 
Um, first of all, I want to know what's your relationship with the girls track team? Is there a lot of camaraderie uh, or is there a lot of competition between each other? And then my second question is going to be, what's one of your favorite subjects or teachers here at Abington High School? So first, tell me about the team relationships. Yeah, the teams are great. Um, having the two teams, we practice together. We're when we practice, we're split up based on events. So the distance runners on the distance runners, sprinters on the sprinters. Um, and that's great because then we get to meet more people, make a lot of friends. It's awesome. Everyone's supporting each other. More people are cheering around the sidelines. Um, it's really fun. You feel the same way that it's, it's kind of one big happy family? You guys all, the men's and women's teams practice together out there on the track, right? Yeah. Uh, in indoors. Mm -hmm. And you guys go on the same bus rides to the Reggie Lewis Center and all that. Um, well, I, I just, well, tell me again then about when you're in the halls, what is it that you like? What kind of class do you look forward to or what teacher do you really have the best connection with? Um, I definitely have to say my, my favorite teacher is probably uh, Mrs. McHugh with AP Lit. Um, she's the best. How about you, Dave? I'd say Mr. Foley with AP CSP. CSP, what's that? Uh, computer Science Principles. Oh, all right. The AP, geez, so you get the, that's a good thing to be involved in right now. Um, how, if someone wants to get, if there's a young kid out there in sixth, seventh, eighth grade right now who wants to try out track, what do you suggest that they do? How can they get involved? So reach out. I think Ms. Peruzzi in the middle school runs a program um, there. There's definitely a club track program there. But if you're in eighth grade, we're hoping to get the waiver for spring. Um, so we'll be able to have eighth graders on board, which is what helps build our team, makes it so strong. Um, it's a super welcoming environment. So come by because we have a lot of fun. How about you, Damon? What would you say to a kid who is thinking about it and not really sure? Is it something that you would encourage them to do? Yeah, I, I, th I definitely think I would encourage them to because it, it definitely like helps you. And like if you're an athlete, if, if not, you, it's just like a good way to like get into like sports. And do you so. see it? I mean, you know, as a young kid, you're always nervous about joining a team because I'm not that fast or I can't throw it that far. But that's pretty much true of most eighth graders and freshmen, right? And then you must see it with some of the underclassmen how much they develop in a year just by practicing, just by going, um, you know, through. They may not place first or second like you guys do, um, but you see everyone kind of growing up and filling the role, and they're going to be the leaders next year, right? I mean, you're a captain. How important is it to be, you've been a captain for two years, congrats. How important is it that, that you really kind of, you, you guys guide the younger kids? You remember being a freshman. Yeah, yeah I think one of the most important things um, our coach, Mike Casey, always says, there's a spot for everyone on the team. Yep. Um, there, your, your time to shine will come. Like, it's all, track, it's all about putting in the effort. Like, there's no one, like, you can't, like, other sports, you can kind of lean on, on other people, but, right. like, the training comes down to you. So if you want to put in the effort, like, there's a spot for you on our team. We welcome everyone. It's, it's awesome. What I think is impressive, when we built the, the track up at Riley Field and opened it up, I think it was 2004, we put a big record board up on the building up there. And almost immediately, we had to start changing the names and changing the times because you guys keep just making it better and better. I mean, that's, and kudos to you guys for all your effort and how hard work. Uh, I know that you've been part of the guys, your second, number two guy on a couple of events. You are going to be perhaps putting your name up there next year. We'll love to see that. Mm -hmm. um, I want to thank you guys for joining us here because I want more people to know about the good things that go on in the track program. And when you're maybe outside driving around Abington and you see a bunch of high school age kids running down the street, you can probably bet that that's the Abbott High School track team if the weather's good. Give them a little beep on the horn, don't lay on the horn, <laughs> but a little beep on the horn and go, go green wave when you see them go by because these guys are running uh, for the green wave and we appreciate all your efforts and all the uh, efforts of your coaches. So I want to thank all of our track guys and girls for being here today. Um, I hope you enjoy watching this show, The Buzz, and hope you'll come back and listen to a few uh, more shows as we go in the future. But for now, we're going to sign off and we want to thank Jack and Damien and Jill and Selena for uh, bringing us all this information to your living rooms at home. Thanks for tuning in.